If you have uh, bolts that you're trying to identify, a lot of times it can be tricky. Um, there's a lot of things that you need to take into account if it's metric or American, what the major diameter is and what the thread pitch is. And if you get any of those things wrong and you try to screw it into um, another size bolt, it's not gonna work. So it's important that you can identify what it is so that you can use it correctly. So first of all, metric versus American. Um, I know that this one is a metric thread and these are American because I've sorted them before, but the difference is um, on a metric bolt, the outside diameter, that would be the distance across the, um, across the peaks of the threads. That would be the distance measured in millimeters. And then on an American bolt, it would be that same distance except just measured in inches. It's pretty similar between metric and American. Now the difference um, is bigger when you get to the pitch. The pitch would be, on a metric bolt, it would be the distance between each thread. Um, and you can identify it using these thread, grid, thread gauges that I'll show later. But on an American bolt, instead of the distance between each thread, it would be how many threads are in one inch. So if you lined this up and counted how many threads there are, you would find your thread pitch. That's a big difference between metric and American bolts. So if you want to identify the major diameter, all you have to do is just um, put your calipers on uh, and see what the diameter is. Oftentimes threads will be undersized, so I know this is a half 13 bolt, but it comes out to about 493. They will, most of the time, they will be undersized. So if you're going to um, try to identify the thread pitch, uh, so supposing you didn't know if it were metric or American, you would need to have a metric thread gauge and an American thread gauge. If you try one, um, I know this is a coarse thread. Um, one, it just looks like one. It's um, for finer threads, it, you would be able to tell. On this side, there's all of the fine, um, fine threading. You can tell that even the coarsest of the fine wouldn't fit in there. So we can automatically know that it is definitely going to be a coarse thread. So by checking um, each of these, you can see that's not correct, that's not correct, that's not correct, that's not correct, that's closer, and that's pretty similar, but it actually is not fitting. Um, maybe hard to tell on camera, but it's not fitting correctly. So it's most likely not a metric. It's none of these sizes that we have here. And again, with the American, we know that it's not any of these fine teeth ones. They're way too fine. Um, so we can start checking. Um, that sort of fits. And that fits right there. Perfect. And this one rocks back and forth. This is something that you sort of have to feel. Um, probably hard to see on camera, but I can tell that that definitely fits perfectly. And that says 13, so we've got 13 threads per inch. Um, another way you could identify it would again be measure out one inch and then count those 13 threads. If you are trying to distinguish between metric and American, that might not work because you. Um, you might count a quarter of a thread and, and not know it. Um, sometimes they're that close. Um, again, you could also measure the distance between these two um, threads. And that would give you um, not the, the standard um, threads per inch, um, but you would just have to um, do one divided by that number to get the number of threads per inch. So uh, another, uh, another bolt that I have here, uh, if you're going to identify it, this one's a lot finer. Sometimes it can be harder to tell if the threads are meshing. Um, again, sort of by feel, this is just skating across. That's not it either. Um, it doesn't really fit. And there, that definitely fits. So we know it's a 32 threads per inch. 
that's how you use the thread gauges. Basically, you line it up um, to, to see which one fits. Once you've identified the bolt you're trying to identify, um, it's good to have a system so you can find it when you need it. We have enough bolts that we've taken apart from scrap from a lot of things that we have in inventory. Um, and we have a bin for just about every American and metric size that you would need. Here are the American sizes, and on the front of the bin, we have a nut and a bolt, so that if you are testing a nut, uh, you're pretty sure it's a 1032, you can spin it into the front here, and it fits into the 1032 nut, so it is a 1032 bolt. So it goes into the bin. In the bin, we have a bunch of nuts and bolts and washers, and we also have a tap for that size, and the die, um, and a um, drill for the tap. Uh, we've got uh, all kinds of things. Um, for some sizes, we have wing nuts, uh, washers, lock nuts, whatever. Uh, all kinds of things. We've even got a counter chunk one there. But it's good to have an inventory. And it's good to have a way to identify and store all of your spare nuts and bolts.